All right, this lesson is prisms. And a prism is a three-dimensional figure that has two bases that are the same. Um, so you can think of them as bases, you can think of them as ends, but basically what, ha what we have is a figure that has, that's sort of been stretched out. <laughs> if you think of it as, um, say, like a, uh, look at a triangular prism here. If we take a triangle and draw it on a piece of paper, and then, actually, you know what, think of it as a triangle drawn on a piece of carbon paper. So that we have two identical triangles, one right on top of each other. If you then separated the, the two images so that one was held up above the other and then connected the corners with straight lines, you'd have a triangular prism. So a prism is just a polygon on each end and then each of the vertices of the original polygon connected to the other polygon with a straight line. So here we have a uh, pentagonal prism here. It's a pentagon on both ends. And then, of course, those ends are connected with what we call lateral edges or lateral faces. And lateral just means on the, along the side. So we have our pentagon on each end and then our lateral faces and edges connecting the pentagons together. Now, in order to find the surface area of a prism, what we need to do is just identify the shapes that make it up. So for this one here, this triangular prism, we have obviously a triangle on each end, so we use our formula for finding the area of a triangle, one-half base times height, one-half bh, nice b, there we go, one-half bh for the area of the triangle on each end, so we're going to have that one twice, and then between each of the, the vertices of those original shapes, so our lateral sides here, these are just going to be rectangles, so then we just need to know how long it is from front to back, and the measurement of any one side of the triangle. And those two sides will end up being the dimensions of each of the rectangles. And then we just multiply by the number of rectangles that we have. In this case, of course, three. So we can think of it, too, by cutting it open, laying it out as a net, like we talked about in a previous lesson, and then just think of the, the measurement of each side separately. We have our two triangles here, one and two, and then our three identical rectangles right here. So as long as we have the measurement of any one of those rectangles, we can just triple it. And as long as we get the measurement of either face, then we can just double that. And then finally, for volume of a prism, volume of a prism is actually a lot easier than it looks. All you have to do is find the area of one of the two faces and then multiply it by however deep or however tall, depending on how you're looking at the figure, that figure actually is. So if, for instance, we had our, our rectangular prism here and we say that this one is, um, oh, I don't know, three units on a side. Yeah, so we got three units here and three units here. So that means that this face then would be three times three or nine units squared, so nine square units. Then if this thing were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, say it was seven units long front to back, then we'd just have nine square units and then we'd sort of have seven stacks of those nine units. So we'd have six times nine or seven times nine or sixty-three cubic units as the volume of our actual figure. And same thing for the triangle. We just find the area of the base on the end and then multiply it by the length. Or find the area of the base on the end and multiply it by the length. So really it's pretty easy. You just find the area of the base and multiply it by what we usually we usually call it the height, even though really a lot of times it's laid down, so it looks like the length. We call it the height and pretend that we're always standing on one of those two end figures. And it really doesn't matter um, what or sort of how that figure is laid out or how that figure might be crushed. If we have a rectangular prism here, so a box, and it has a given area on the front, yeah, or a given area on this face here, think of it either way is fine. Once we know that area, it doesn't matter how the box might be bent or shaped. As long as that area is the same and we know what the height is, the volume of the box is going to be the same. So we don't really need to know this slant height necessarily. We just need to know the height from the base of the figure to the top of the figure and the depth of the figure front to back and then the area of the base to calculate the volume of that figure. So if the base of this figure, for this one here, um, if we know, for instance, that the top here is 40 feet squared, and then, of course, the bottom that we can't see would also be 40 feet squared. If it is then 4 feet tall from here to here, then it's going to be 40 times 4, or 160 cubic units. 
Well, if this figure here is the same, if it's also 40 feet squared up here and 40 feet squared on the bottom that we can't see, then if it's 4 feet from top to bottom, even though it's kind of canted to the right here, it's still going to be 40 times 4, or 160 cubic units. So we can really almost ignore the fact that it's bent as long as we can find the area of the top and the bottom and then multiply it by whatever the actual physical height of the figure is. Okay? And we'll play around a little bit. That'll make a little more sense when we do a couple of examples in the example questions. So let's move on and take a look at those.